Top of the afternoon, top of the afternoon, guys. Damien Jones here again for you today. Um, I'm sorry I haven't been on for about a fortnight now. Uh, the problem is I've been really busy with Christmas and everything like that. But I'm back now, and today, although this is only going to be a short video because, as I say, I'm losing the light at the moment, and as you can see up here, that light isn't very good. It's one of those energy saving council crappy jobs. So the lighting here is a bit poor. So I'd rather do my videos during the day rather do them properly. Um, anywho, all that rambling aside, today I wanted to share this with you. Something that I intend to restore. It's... um one of many of mine now i've got a few of these now <laughs> a few of these it's a uh, 1944 dated um german gas mask canister now i'm going to be doing a video on german gas masks very very soon but i wanted to restore this i i only paid a tenner for it um as I say, it's a 1944 model. Um, it's got a few issues, though. I've got much better, and I'll show you that when I showcase these things. Bear with me. It's as stiff as hell, for starters, because it's all rusty. But uh, you'll never see in there, I don't think. Hold on. Always have a handy torch. Bear with me a second, guys. Alright, maybe we can see a bit better now. There we go. As you can see, it's uh, all rusted in there. I've uh, scoured out most of it. But I'm far from finished yet. There's a maker's mark in the bottom there as well. Um... If you can see this better, you probably won't in this light. As I say, that it's seen better days. It's all rusty, and the lid is very stiff. But I'm going to sort it out, and I'm going to use this one for my German M38 uh, gas mask. Uh, I've actually got a couple of them to show you, but I'm not doing it today. Today, I just wanted to do a quick recce with you over this, which I paid a tenner for, which I think is an absolute bargain. And uh, we're just going to go over some of the issues with it. At some point in its life, this thing has been painted black. I think also somebody's used it to keep engine oil in it and that's rusted out all of the uh, all of the bottom and as I say there's absolutely no way I'm going to stick my lovely German gas mask in there to get rust all over it so as I say I'm going to sort it out I'm going to get all that black paint off underneath you can just about well maybe not in this light we can try yeah, that's better, isn't it? Uh, we can see some of the markings on it. We have a D for Deutschland, Germany. And as you can see, there's hardly any paint left on the bottom. Also, the gas mask canister, it should have three strap attachments on. One of these has been uh, pulled off at some point in its time. Now, the question is, when I give it a repaint, after I've finished getting all the rust off it, what colour should I go for? Um, will it be the NATO green, or will it be that rather nice German grey? I think I'm going to be, I'm going to be different, because you don't see many of the ones that are grey. They tend to be all like that NATO-y coloured. And, I mean, and let's face it, half of these are repainted anyway. 
So I'm going to do that. Let's see if we can just, if you just look underneath the rather shabby remains of this black paint that somebody's put over it, you can probably make out that it was originally, there's a dint in it as well, you can probably see that it was originally German grey. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to restore it to how it was meant to be or how it once was. See if I can show you some marks on this as well. Some of the markings on it are so faint because they've been covered by... Um, K8B44, I don't know if you can see that, it's like a little triangular type thing, it's very faint, but it's definitely there, I think that's about the best I can show you. Other than that, is the D for Deutschland on the bottom, which they all had. And on here, if we're very lucky, we can make out a 44 on the, uh, the actual clasp. So there we go. We've got, I've got this. For a tenner and I think that's an absolute bargain and I'm going to restore it so that it's absolutely fantastic like all of my other German gas mask canisters so that's the deal of the day that's what I'm going to be doing I've already been looking around um, finding the various bits that I'm going to need and I have to say I'm not really very impressed with the reproduction straps available on the market at the moment um, they're not very good at all. I'll just show you what I mean. They're selling at the moment these straps, replacement straps, for the gas mask canisters. And I have to say, they're not very good. This is a long strap. Which I think is the wrong thickness for starters. They're selling the short strap. And what they're missing, because what you're supposed to have on these things is, I'll just show you on another example. I've got a, a Druken just over here, which is complete. Bear with me. Okay. Taking a look at me Druken at the moment. There are three straps that you need on a German gas mask canister. Let me take me a bit of a elastic off, because I like to keep everything in one place. Bear with me. Right, on this Druken, which is a post-war um, gas mask canister, but still the, the straps are the same. You're supposed to have your long strap here, which attaches to the soldier's webbing. You've got your long strap, which goes over the shoulder. And you've got this strap here. You know, on your opening clasp. So that's what we're going to... That's what I've tried to get for this one which we're going to sort out now with the reproduction kits i've noticed they sell you the short strap and they sell you the long strap but they don't sell you you don't get this bit you know for the easy opening of it you don't get this bit so what i'm going to do is I'm not going to use, I'm not going to use these, I, I, they're the wrong thickness as well, they're too thin, I think they come from, I think they come from the Czech Republic or something, uh, where they're making these reproduction ones, or uh, other ones come from China and they're really terrible, but I'm not going to be using these, but what I am going to do, is I'm going to strip them, basically I'm going to get the correct webbing, right, of the correct thickness, which should be 25 millimetres, and um, I'm going to strip these straps of the clasps 
and the studs and the buckles and I'm going to measure and make my own so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to basically I'm going to make something like this yeah out of this okay that's what I'm going to be doing so what I need to do is and this is what I'm going to do and you'll see the before and after next time you'll see because I mean you can see this now next time um, it won't be empty like it is now it'll, it'll be housing my fantastic German gas mask which is just over there which I'm not going to show you now because I'm going to show you properly in the daytime when I've got proper lights and I'm doing a proper video so next time there's going to be spare goggles lenses in there and it's going to be nicely painted in here once I've finished clearing out <laughs> all of the, the mess and the rust and the nonsense in there oh, I think that needs winding up again I'm going to have a gas mask in here there's going to be spare lenses in there there's going to be the correct straps here here and there's also got to, I'm gonna to have to replace this uh, this strap arm for the small strap here how I'm gonna do that is the, there's two ways you can go about replacing one of these if they break off you, you basically you've got to make one of your own because they don't make these anymore and they're not available to buy as replacements when these break off it's actually a very rare problem to see the lower strap arm off one of these that's probably why i got it for the tenner but it suits me i drive normally when these things are in good condition they can sell from hmm, upwards of 40 pounds you know an original to be honest if you're even a reproduction one you know that's nice can sell for about 40 44 pounds so i've got an original and i got it for a tenner and i'm going to toss it up and it's going to look fantastic on display as I've done before with helmets and things so uh, yeah that's what I'm going to do with this now as I say once the arms come off here you've got you've really got to make your own and there are two ways you can go about that you can either take in a wire coat hanger or some other thick piece of malleable metal you can make a new one and solder it on but that ain't that i could do that but first of all i ain't got a soldering gun at present and secondly that's going to be quite expensive isn't it and you know i want to do this on the cheap and i want to do it properly uh, if i was to just solder that piece of wire coat hanger onto there you're going to tell that i've replaced it aren't you so i'm not going to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to build one over the chicken wire and it's going to have the little bulled edges that these ones have got sorry about this the light is so appalling in here it's unbelievable that's why i why i've not been doing so many videos lately but as i say you know it's they're going to look down here is going to look just like one of these up here and i'm going to do that using modeling clay called lily um milliput i really said lily put <laughs> milliput and i'm going to use this piece of wire coat hanger as a framework and by the time i finish making it after a few hours once it's hardened and certainly once this has been repainted you're not going to really you i swear you will not be able to tell that i've put a reproduction um strap arm on here so that's what i'm going to do folks that's my little recce over this gas mask canister and when i've finished it's going to look as good if not better than my druken here which is absolutely fantastic i've got this and i've got i've got another variation of the world war ii type i've got the earlier type but again i'm going to explain that in more detail um in a later video 
but as I say for now I'm going to be restoring this to its former glory and it's going to look fantastic and it won't take me very long either it'll probably take me uh, give me about a week give me about a week and once you next see this it's going to look fantastic it's going to be a fantastic a display piece as this one is here and that's that folks that's what I'm going to be doing so for now that's my gas mask canister and that is my plans what I'm going to be doing with it and then I'm going to do a big video um, explaining all about German World War II gas masks and I'm also going to be including post-war gas masks and also pre-war gas masks so that you know those of you that are collecting out there because there's quite a community of you now um, are going to understand little differences in model and design and how to date things if marks aren't are present and things like that so I'm going to explain all of that and that'll be good uh, my next video though is going to be much sooner than next week and as I've promised in my comments uh, I'm going to be covering my uh, World War One grenade collection I'll just give you a quick sneaky peek at that right now that's if light will let me in here can we see them there's a few relics there but I've got many many more I have many many more to show you and I'm going to do that in my next video but for now thanks for watching oh and a big thank you all to my new subscribers as well I've now got over 100 subscribers and that's really you know that's really pleased me so thank you very much for that well I'm done rambling I'm going to get on and I'm going to restore this and next time you see it it's going to look fantastic for now though I'm Damien Jones Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Cheers for watching. Bye-bye for now.